Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Texas Bar TV. It is the State Bar Annual Meeting 2017. We're on day number two. Day number two. It is June the 23rd, 2017. It's already almost the end of this decade. But, guys, my first guest for this morning, he was our, our keynote this morning at the, at the conference. If you missed him, you missed a great talk. We got the legendary Brian Garner. Brian, welcome. Thank you. So glad to be here. It's, it's a pleasure to have you. You know, so you talked this morning about reforming legal writing. Right. And I mean, I know this is a topic you've talked a lot about, and it looks like we're always trying to evolve. But what are what are some of the key takeaways you think people need to take, take from well, this? Well, what I did I, in 30 minutes, I decided to talk about uh, nine urgent reforms that would transform the way lawyers write and three for litigators, three for transactional lawyers, and three for uh, judges. And really it all has to do with um, how you open, um, how clear the writing is all the way through, and, and, and closing powerfully. But uh, they were slightly different points, of course, for transactional lawyers. Sure. But I just tried to give the nitty gritty points about uh, what various aspects of the profession could do to improve their writing. Now, who as lawyers do we write for? Are we writing for other lawyers or are we writing for the general public so they can understand what we're writing about? Well, in my view, we, uh, we should be writing to make our message accessible to anybody who wants to learn about it. And so it's a good idea for lawyers, even transaction lawyers, to try to make contracts more generally comprehensible. I think judicial opinions need to be accessible to the public. It's sure. a part of access to justice and it ensures that people are actually thinking more clearly as well. Uh, so the writing helps both the writer, writing clearly helps both the writer and the reader, and um, in law, words are the only tools that we have, sure, so sure. it's critically important. What about, what about the readability in the sense of using maybe more informal prose? Contractions, for example, I mean. I'm all in favor of contractions. Uh, and I use contractions, both in contracts and in, I use contractions even in treatises. You know, it's, I imagine you probably get some pushback from lawyers that are maybe more traditionalists. And they say, well, I want to have the wherefores and the premises considered, and I don't want contractions, and I want Latin phrases. I mean, I can see there being some pushback. Or even from individual judges who prefer to see that type of language in the briefs that are submitted to them. So, what is your what's your reaction when you come across that argument? It's it's scary for a lawyer sure. to do something that uh, he or she thinks may cause punitive reactions. Um, I guess I'm just kind of fearless on this point. And and uh, if you're writing well. You know, most of the things that you're reading all the time, you don't even notice all the contractions. It's just easy to read. But the endemic problem in law is stuffiness. Sure. I mean, that's the, that's the tonal fault in most legal writing. It's, just, it's so stuffy. And the minute you use contractions, then many other aspects of the writing get simplified, including l losing the legalese and so on. So uh, contractions are healthy. Let's, let's talk for, for a moment about Black's Law Dictionary, because I know... You've been the editor of that for... Last uh, four unabridged editions. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. So what what are some of the, maybe one or two major changes you think people ought to be aware of? Well, if you're working with a Black's Law Dictionary that's uh, pre, really, pre-2000, it's uh, very much out of date. And uh, so it's taken a team of scholars that I've headed, um, a major effort to transform the book. One thing we do is we give the earliest known use of each term sure. in the English language. And then we we have added thousands of terms and re-researched all the old definitions. So even things like the Latin phrases, Latin maxims, the historical terms of Roman right. law right. are more accurate and there's more scholarly depth than ever with the book. So it's really been remade. Interesting, interesting. Brian, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for thank, thank you. you for being here today. And ladies and gentlemen, look, if you're not at the annual meeting every year, you're missing out on talks like these. We'd love to see you in 2018, but for now, we thank you for tuning in. We will see you next time here on Texas Bar TV. For now, this is Rocky Deer signing off.